All right, before I ended the last video, I promised that I would give you an example of how the intermediate value theorem might be used on a true response. So I'll give you one. And let's use our favorite function, x squared. Because it's easy, and you know, everybody knows what it looks like, more or less. So, you know, it's familiar, and it's not hard for me to draw. I'm going to scale it a bit wide so that it's not like completely bunched up. Usually x squared is like a lot thinner. So this is y equals x squared. And how should we set our intervals? Well let's set so let, let let's do this. Let's let's set uh the interval x between one and two. So this is x, this is y, I always like to label my axes. And here's a question, what are the corresponding y values? Well, we should know that. y equals x squared, so 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. So let me write that down really quick. The corresponding y values are 1 and 4. Now my question to you is, well, the college board's question to you is, um, does IVT apply to this interval such that f of c is equal to 3? And justify your answer. All right, so it's asking you, um, is there a value c such that f of c equals 3 over the interval 1, 2? Well, think back to the last video and think that if our interval is between 1 and 2, we need to find the values of the function at 1 and and two, so we know what we're working with here. And we know that polynomial functions are always continuous, by the way, and this is obviously continuous, so we don't worry have to worry about that, but we know this is a continuous function. And we already found the values of um, one and two. If we put it into the function y equals x squared, um, f of one is one, f of two is four. So f of one, equals 1, f of 2 equals 4. Now we said that if there's a value k between 1 and 4, there's going to be a c such that f of c equals 4. And what that c is uh, we just need to plug into y and then solve for x to find that corresponding x. So obviously 3 is between 1 and 4, right? And this is a continuous function, so the IVT does apply here. The IVT states, so since f of 1, oh, Jesus Christ. Since, <laughs> sorry, since f of 1 equals 1 and f of 2 equals 4 and 1 is between 3 and 3 is between 4 by the intermediate value theorem you can abbreviate it IVT there exists a C um, a is less than C is less than B, such that F of C is equal to 3. And that is all you need to do for your justification. Um, you know, you can mix it up a bit. I, I, I don't have, like, the formal definition memorized, you know. This, this makes sense, and it's a good justification. This would give you full credit on the AP free response. And, of course, you need to say yes, that this is 
the this is true there is a C and you know what is that C you know um well uh, plug in 3 for Y so you get 3 equals X squared square root both sides so rad 3 equals X so X is going your C is going to be rad 3 and it's rad 3 squared is 3 so there you have it um, so yeah that's our example that I promised and uh, you know five minutes video it's pretty short so uh, let's talk about differentiability for a second so a function is differentiable over an interval a b if for every point c between a and b um, the derivative exists so an interval I'm going to write that down. Int interval is differentiable, differentiable if for all c, all c, um, the derivative f prime of c exists. And what does it mean for the derivative f prime of c to exist? Uh, you may have no idea what a derivative is, and if so, that's okay. You can skip this part of the video and come back later, but most of you probably know what a derivative is. Um, and what does it mean for a derivative to exist? Well, it means that the derivative from the left-hand side is equal to the derivative on the right-hand side. So what that basically means is, you know, you um, you can't have sharp points. So this is no good. Um, you can't have cusps like this. This is no good, and you can't have jumps. So jumps are also no good. These are all signs that a function is not differentiable at this special point here. And yet, you know, like, yes, the slope from the left here is looks like zero, and the slope here from the right-hand side looks like zero, but they're not continuous. So for a function to be differentiable, not only does do the slopes from the left-hand and the right-hand side have to match, or their derivatives, uh, for another word, um, they, the function has to be continuous, so there's no jumps. And that is basically it for differentiability. And I think we're actually done with um, the basics here. And uh, we're going to be starting a real, a real unit soon, which is um, derivatives, how to take them, applications, so on and so forth. Yeah, so it should be exciting. See you soon.